Hello and good morning. So for today's lab activity, we will look into how to make your Android application to support different screen sizes. Unlike web application or desktop application, Android application have to be developed in order to support different Android devices that have a different dimension, screen sizes, and also densities. So that's why whenever that you are developing an Android application, you must ensure that your Android application can be displayed as effectively as possible and as uniformly as possible and as consistently as possible on different devices. Because if you fail to do so, your application might not be optimized whenever it is displayed on a device that have a different screen size than your own devices that you have tested with. So you need to ensure that your device can display its screen elements and GUI consistently on different devices so that your application are accessible, accessible to, uh, to the wider audience. So this Android tutorial will show how to support different screen sizes with different techniques. That is, you can use the dimension that allow the layout to resize programmatically or to resize uh, automatically according to the screen sizes. Or you may also create an alternative user interface layout that is set according to the screen configuration. So uh, let's look into different uh, techniques. Right, uh, for most modern Android application, when you, whenever you are developing an Android layout, you will be presented with constraint layout. Okay, constraint layout uh, is the latest layout that are available on your Android Studio that allow you to develop your user interface in a manner that uh, independent to the actual screen size and then it is also allowed your application to be responsive whenever the user would change the screen orientation so um what is the golden rule is that you need to avoid hard-coded layout sizes so you should use rep content or match parent or a device independent pixel or alternatively you can also use SDP. SDP is a scalable size unit library that allow your layout to be displayed uh, or size to be specified in a portable manner. So this is an example of um, an application that uses SSP library. So this one, uh, you will see that uh, the layout being displayed uh, would be consistent from one device to another device when compared that uh, to the layout that are built using uh, device independent pixel uh, value. Okay, the layout are not consistent. So we want to avoid this. We want your uh, layout to be consistent even if you are using different devices or if your user are using different devices whether it is a mobile device such as mobile phone or a tablet or even a car uh, head unit display so this uh, you can use sdp and write a library okay and then another thing that you need to be concerned of if you want to develop a, an application that can be uh, can change or can adapt its screen size according to the screen orientation so this is an example of a flexible text view so for today's lab session uh, i will teach you how to manage uh, the screen size and make sure that your application are portable 
Okay, this is example uh, of an application. So, let's say that if the user tries to change the screen orientation okay, to, uh, from portrait to landscape, you will see that uh, this application are not that portable. Okay, you can see that these application are not that portable. So, this is what we are uh, going to avoid. So, whenever that you are designing an application, we want that application to be portable. So, the objective for the lab session for today is for you to design an application that are portable across different devices, even if the devices have different screen sizes and screen density. So, uh, let's look into the new uh, project. Okay, I will show you how to create this project from the ground up because I'm also going to show you how to use uh, cut view and also how to use um, SVG or scalable vector graphic in order to design an icon that are scalable. Okay, first create a new project. Okay. And then you can put in any other name. Uh, this is the name of my project. Okay, test layout. Okay, let's see that uh, if we want to create this, uh, the layout. So, uh, okay, this is an empty layout. You can also click over here at this eye uh, icon. So, Whenever that you are clicking on the eye icon, you can change the view so that it can show the system UI. Okay, just like this. So this can function as a guideline. And then you can also change the orientation of your layout. Okay, like this. So that you can have a guideline uh, on how your application would look like if the user try to change the orientation from portrait to landscape. And then you can also change the device uh, UI. So this is by default pixel. You can also change to Nexus 5. Okay, or your AVD. Okay, like this. And like this. And then you can also change to layout to accommodate a tablet. Okay, this is tablet. Tablet Nexus 5. And then this is pixel C. And this is Nexus 9. So, um, okay, uh, the Android Studio have all the tools that can help you to design a consistent user interface or user interface layout for your application to be portable across different devices. Okay, let's design uh, this application. Right, I'm going to be this quick. Okay, you can create a uh, click uh, here on the code or the sp uh, split. So let's try to design this uh, user interface to Android. Try to do a background. Okay, the background will be a slightly uh, gray. Okay, if you want it to be grayer, you can change the okay, you can change the background color. Okay, like this. I love it uh, when you can do the split okay, like this AD we use for this application is card okay if you can look on the internet how on how to use the card view so in order to get the card view you can go to widget and then select card view or container sorry container to select a card view okay, this is a card view and then you can select a uh, text view. Okay, put it under cut view. Okay, so that it will uh, seem something like this. So we have call about, uh, sorry, call about call message. Okay, this should be home. All right, this is a typo. Okay, this should be home. And then you can go to drawable uh, top. Okay, click here okay from the text view click drawable top okay to select the icon so the icon home is not here so you can create a new icon over here okay go to the drawable 
right click select new select vector asset and then click at the android face over here and right hit and type home so you will get a home color and then I change the size to 48 and then click next and then finish okay next you have about call and message okay you can just create this uh, drawable first right Okay, this one for about. I see about. Yeah, I see means icon. And then another, it should be vector. So why we create a vector icon? Because vector icon is flexible, it can be resized. Uh, programmatically and then it is defined as XML and then we have call and message so um, the quality of the vector asset will not be compromised if you resize the screen so it is better if you create your icon using a vector asset message okay let's see here okay you click here on the text view look at the drawable top okay over here drawable top so we have here icbs line home we get a home icon <clears throat> right now it task for us to resize the card view so in order to resize card view we need a size we need to define its size so uh we need to go to this website okay inuit sdp so this is the sdp library from github okay go down here and then go to the implementation okay this is a good library Okay, that allows you to place an independent uh, size or pixel, right? And then go to Gradle script. Okay, go to build Gradle in for the application layout. Okay, double click here. Okay, go to the bottom and then paste. Okay, into it SDP. And then pressing now. Right, next, uh, go to, back to the layout. Then click on the code. Okay, let's see the card view. Okay, the card view is not constrained, so that's why it is highlighted in red. Okay, so you try to put a demand. Okay, 120. Okay, we try 120 first. Okay, we set an independent uh, or scalable dimension to 120. Then let's see the impact. All right, so we have the impact over here. Right, it's impact. Right, and then we need to constrain the view. Okay, like this. Of course, we need to constrain the view. Right here. And go back to the code. So we can set the padding. Android padding. Right. At the man slash underscore 16 SDP. And then we try to set uh, for padding left. Okay, so it will have a little bit of comfort. Uh, comfort line over here. Comfort uh, padding or comfort margin. Okay, next, uh, we want this to be uh, centered. So to be uh, to set it to be centered, we can go to gravity, center vertical, and then center, sorry, center horizontal, and then go to the layout, the layout gravity, center vertical, center horizontal. So it will come uh, center. 
right okay and then to change the color just click uh, on the icon over here okay we have rollable uh, top and then find rollable thin click on the color and then click on the resource okay just pick uh, the resource on the highlight so remember back when we learn about customizing the icon and customizing the application so in material design like uh, colors we have uh, define the colors so we use just use the colors that has been defined okay this is uh, what we call as accent okay accent color right okay so we have finished over here and then you can copy and paste right so we deal with another cut view okay over here right we can deal with another cut view and then you can change the positioning uh, or sorry you can change the view Let's see what uh, your layout will look like when you are using uh, Nexus 6. And then change again. Okay, Nexus 7. So it become uh, uniform. Right? Uniform. Okay, what happened when you use uh, Nexus 5? Right? It become uh, uniform. Okay, next uh, we need to change uh, the icon. Click over here, you can have an about. Okay, change it to about. Oh yeah, you can also change uh, the radius. So, if I'm not mistaken, you can uh, always change the radius. Okay, you can delete this text view, which is not important. Okay, cut corner radius. You can uh, have a demand. Okay, you can try about 6 SVP okay, for a change. So, it has a little bit uh, corner over here. Sorry. Okay, so you have a little bit con of a corner over here. So, you can increase the dimension to have uh, more uh, uh, corner a more rounded uh, view like this okay and then you can paste on another cut view okay like this so it will come something like this so when you run the application okay you have uh, interface looking like this all right okay and interface looking like this okay next you can duplicate and then paste okay when you duplicate ensure that uh, you duplicate it uh, carefully especially at the bottom okay you have to realign back Okay, like this. Sorry, uh, and then go to uh, rollable top. It changes to call. Okay, because we use it as call. Okay, so this will become message. Right, and then you can replay back. Right, okay. This will be your basic application. Okay, the problem is that when you try to do a landscape, Right, we have already solved the problem by using the SDP library. So without SDP library, your application would not look as consistent on different devices. 
But now, uh, your application does not look uh, consistent when okay, when the user are changing the view or whenever the user are using a tablet okay, like this. Right? In order to solve that problem, you might have to use to create a new variation. So you have to go over here and then click here. And then click on create landscape variation. So when you click here, click a landscape variation, you will pre be presented by a second activity main. So the second activity main are labeled as activity main land. Okay, to denote that this is a landscape variation of your user element. So in essence, this is cheating. <laughs> it, it, it is almost that you are cheating. You are Supplying your application with different UI. So this is the same trick that has been done by numerous applications. So whenever you are creating a, a mobile application, you are supplying your mobile application with different user interface. So these user interface are only displayed for different devices. So one application, different user interface. So there are many cases where a single application have up about 10 different variation of user interface. Sometimes there are four, okay, four variation of user interface. It is actually the same user interface, but uh, the developer would create a variation so that the, the application would appear uh, consistently on different devices. Okay. Now that you have already created a, a landscape, okay, user interface. So what left to do is try to rearrange back the user interface. You can also rearrange, okay, like this. Okay, what you are doing here does not affect the portrait user interface. So you can do this, something like this. Okay, you can delete the constraint. Okay, for example, and then this will allow you to create a pleasing, more, much more pleasing uh, UI. So let's reduce it, reduce the size to 96. Okay, let's see that if we can reduce it to 96 or reduce it to 90. Okay, to give uh, a way to give way to the landscape user interface. Okay, let's look at the card view. Okay. So when you're pasting, make sure that you done certain editing over here. Okay, because the UI won't update if you are do, do not do certain editing, right? Okay, have to do certain editing like this. Okay, so that it would reset. All right. Okay. Then you go back over here. Okay, just like this. So, uh, we just have to modify the layout width to 96. Right. And then uh, clicking at the speed. And then design, then we should rerun back the application. So we try to change the orientation. And then we can see the orientation has been, uh, uh, has been altered uh, to be much more pleasing. So when you compare it with the previous application, okay, this is the previous application. It will become something like this, which is uh, not pleasing. But uh, then, uh, when you choose it uh, with the new technique, uh, with the new layout, okay, create a new alternative layout. When the user change the orientation, the phone will display your application in a much more pleasing manner. So uh, that's all for today's lab session. Hopefully you enjoy the lab session and hopefully after this, when you are doing your project, your final year uh, project especially, 
you are able to create an application that can be displayed consistently across different mobile devices and different uh, screen sizes. Just remember to adhere to the advices that uh, are written in the Android developers uh, documentation. Okay, this is the official Android developers documentation to support different screen sizes and then use the appropriate library okay, such as the SDP scalable size unit library in order to make sure that your application can appear to be consistently across different devices. Okay, that's all for today's lab session. Be seeing you on the next lab.